Hello, everybody. Doing a show called Weird Things. Yay. Yeah, sorry. I'm in, I'm in the middle of of, of 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 sowing discontent between Justin Robert Young and Veronica Belmont. Oh, wait, what happened? Uh, oh, <laughs> just as we went live, Veronica Belmont tweets out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> uh, Watchmen was a perfect season of TV, and I and I just replied with CC colon Justin Robert Young. Why are you <laughs> trying to get me in fights? I'm not trying. I I I, I made it a conscious effort. We we, we literally right before we went live, I said you're the only person that I want to have a contentious argument. I with. know. I, I I it's only because we're such good friends that we that that that, that we can but, have uh, that gentle ribbing. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll have to tell Veronica she's dead wrong to her face at Sketchfest on January 22nd. Dude, we're doing Sketchfest? How crazy is that? Should we write a sketch? Mm -hmm. We've never written a sketch before. Sure. We, should write a, we should write and perform a sketch live on stage. <laughs> uh, oh, and actually, we have a guest that you don't even know about. Oh, good. Uh, I'm not going to tell you. Literally, well, I mean, Good, I guess no. eventually be on the website, but then you'll, uh, then everyone. At some point, right. I will discover the truth. At some point, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Although, I would not put it past you to just have life, uh, of, you know, life will continue to fill your vision, and you will totally be unaware until the actual show of Sketchfest. Uh, uh, because you know, there's a lot going on. Yeah, no, seems you very possible. Me, boy, seems incredibly kidding. likely that that's what happens. This is uh, a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. You're taking the uh, the don't pass line, <laughs> the most <laughs> likely scenario. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're gonna get started here in just a few minutes with weird things. Hey, Andrew, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, guys. So, 
Hey, Bryce. Bryce, now that oh. you're running the Death Star over okay. there, are you able uh-huh. to do something crazy like, uh, like, like, is Andrew on a different channel than Justin? No. Oh. Is that is that not doable, or we just haven't done it? Uh, it is not doable because uh, Skype got rid of that almost <sighs> two years ago. Oh man, uh, the no no multiple Skype instances or right. Uh, bummer. Bummer. All right. Yeah, that does sink. Oh, wow. Uh, so, sorry, Andrew, I was asking how you're doing. I am good. Okay. Uh, then good Good talk. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I, th- I think what everybody's trying to say is I think we're all just ready wanna, to go. I just want to make sure. Okay, well, I just want to make sure we're. I'm trying to be a man of few words, not bloviate and go on and on and on. And you can just continue talking when people want me to just stop and keep it short. So I've decided from now on, henceforth, onto the future until some unknown date. I will make my sentences extremely, excruciatingly tiny, tiny, and only use the barest minimum number of words I possibly could use. So cool. says the man who wrote a novel in a day. Yeah, that's how you write a novel in a day. It was a really, really, really dark and stormy night. The night was <laughs> darker, darker than you would expect, darker than I suspect you are capable of suspecting of suspecting. How dark? Imagine the very, darkest very night dark. ever. Then go darker, even darker than okay. that. All right. All right. Bryce, how do you this creativity? Uh, yeah, sorry, we're losing all of this wonderful prose, but we do have to get started <laughs> with the show. Uh, oh, we got to turn the channel on, too. Let, do that. let it go. Yeah, just let it go. Like that song says. All right. Uh, if you guys are ready, then ready let's to rock. go in uh, whenever you're ready, Andrew, in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Justin Robert Young. Yo! And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. That's me. Hey, uh, so uh, Justin, I noticed you got a hat on there. I do. Yeah, I'm wearing a hat because I did not comb my hair, nor have I taken a shower. Mm, so you didn't comb your hair. Did you, do you need a haircut? I actually do. <laughs> I actually do need a haircut, yeah. Let me ask you a question. I, everybody, like, I hate getting haircuts. I thought about this. I had to go get a haircut, and, like, I just, because I'm, like, sitting there, and I can't do anything and the woman who cuts my hair, she's nice, but we don't talk about a lot. And so I just like if I could just black out and wake up with my haircut, I'd probably do that instead. Oh, my God. I could not disagree with you more. I had a haircut this very morning. Also got a beard trim. And yes, I paid the five dollars extra and spent the five extra minutes to get a beard conditioning. And it was bliss. You know what I love the most about it? Number one. Close your eyes. Keep your eyes closed the entire time. They feel no need to make chit-chat. Besides, you're just going to mess it up. If you're talking while they're trimming your beard, how are they supposed to get anything done? So you go into sort of like a meditation. Here's the best part. They touch your face, and they touch your scalp. And I I don't know if I've shared this live. There's nothing I love more than having my touch uh, scalped or my scalp touched, either one. Everybody remember that next time you see Brian. Uh, yes, no, and, and, and it's one of those few moments where it's totally appropriate, and then when they condition the beard, how often, how often do other people in your life who aren't, like, in your immediate tribe reach forward and just, just mush your cheeks and just rub your face? You, you never get that! This is a socially right, appropriate Brian, moment I, where somebody can, I, oh, don't. so good! This is a stranger touching my cheeks! Tribe, Brian. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 a- Andrew's bare cheeks aside, uh, let's ask this, because I, I'm with Andrew here, that the biggest thing that I find awkward is not, like, uh, your your experience, Brian, that's ideal. But being in a situation where everybody knows I'm not going to talk, you shouldn't talk, I'm just going to sit here and follow your orders until we're done with this process, I think is ideal. But what Andrew's saying and what I would uh, 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 go ahead and co-sign on is that very often you get these barbers. I don't think I've ever gotten a barber that hasn't at least tried to initiate conversation. And now you're in a situation where do I be curt uh, and therefore, you know, uh, rhetorically try to put up the stop sign that I don't want this or 
do you talk and then uh, uh, risk, even to your point, Brian, the fact that they're going to screw something up? Yeah, well, so, so here's my question. Okay. Uh, for Justin, then, would you consider a robot barber? Uh, in a, a, a million times out of a million. I would what if I told robot. you there was somebody testing a robotic barber in Oakland with an email address where you can email them and say, I want to try this? Oh, my God. Can I do it now? Do they have it? Can I slide into their DMs? <laughs> uh, I sent Bryce the link to this. It was on a Hacker News. Somebody says, I'm building a robot barber. <laughs> oh, my God. So we're looking at the video of this right now where we're showing that the, the, the robotic arm has like an iPhone it's using to make a 3D map of somebody's head. And then apparently some custom software or whatever is figuring out where it needs to trace and cut. <laughs> not at all terrifying. <laughs> so right, it's cleaning but, up the neck. It's cleaning up the neck pretty good. Yeah, it also looks like he's about to be executed for his participation in the robotic uprising of the late nineties. <laughs> um, it sounded great, and then when I clicked on the link to watch this, I'm like, mm, I'm gonna take Emma, <laughs> you know, my stylist. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, what happens if you move? You can't move. You can't even like an, you you sway a little I mean, bit, and you're gonna get a, a, a asymmetrical cut. In theory, great razor, Bryce. <laughs> in theory, I would assume that that eventually it'll get good and precise enough that you could move as much as you want, and it'll be better than you at everything. But yeah. pro tip. If you have a pair of glasses, they don't even have to be your prescription or whatever. I happen to wear prescription lenses, and I and I happen to be super blind. So, quick inoculating line before you you know become friends with it or whatever. Just say, hey, I'm gonna take off my glasses. I'm super super blind, so I'm just gonna sit here with my eyes closed. If that's okay, they'll say that's okay. Last words needs to be said the entire time. No awkward anything. Just them touching your scalp, touching your oh face, touching the back of your neck. Do, do you go to one of those places where they where they put a massage at the end? Do they do the massage at the end? I, I have, I have the the place that I currently go to. Wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We just watched this entire video that, that that's up here. Bryce, can we go back to that? And the entire time, I just kind of, I'm like, all right, well, it's really cool. It's got this arm here, but boy, does it go slow. <laughs> it really is a real deliberate process. And it was just kind of shaving his neck, and it just barely touched the actual hair. And then he's like, well... That's it. Like, like in this, like, oh, almost like a cartoon where he gets like two, like, like strands of haircut. It's just like, well, that'll be a dollar fifty, pop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a contact info there on the the Hacker News post. If you want to look into that, Justin, if you want to consider like, you know, saying, hey, because I, th I was thinking about here's the hardest part about like I built a robotic barber is like, how do I test this thing? I mean, there's um, only one way, right? I, yeah, but it will you be got into a lot of iterations, you know, you're going to start like you, you mess up a few times and you're calling up your friends like, hey, do you guys want to come over? No, no, not again. Never again. I mean, I, I assume like you start with with like some Chia pets, right? You you grow four or five little pigs that or Homer Simpsons that look like they have hair and then you have it trim on those. Maybe homeless people. Just sit right here. Drink this. You'll be fine. I mean, we're, we're, we're actually moving into some uncomfortably real territory here in the city of Oakland. But uh, I, I, I will say, I will submit myself to a robot haircut uh, if, if we can, if, if the if the inventor is willing to allow me to do it, then I will submit to a robot haircut. I, I will. Uh, my 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 lifestyle affords me such that that I that like if I have a screwed up haircut, it'll just make everybody more excited. So that's really a win win for me. Now uh, uh, it should be noted that uh, this I think this is just doing neck fuzz cuts is what this web the hacker news bit says. Charging six dollar open beta and charging six dollars for neck fuzz cuts in Oakland. So Why you, are you man, charging? I, what is that? First of I'll, all, I'll do that for six bucks. I'll do it for five. I'll I, undercut them right now because that's like zip zip. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, look, I will I will attach a, a blade to the Roomba and say, lay down on the ground and give me five bucks, whatever. Uh, also, kudos in the chat to whoever just suggested Android Scissor Hands as the name for this thing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I would get a neck fuzz cut. I mean, the six bucks, I just kind of assume, is, 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 a, is a nominal fee, so people just aren't abusing the process. Okay, for the record, a beard trim with an actual human. Full beard trim is six bucks it, it, and, and it takes half as long and they touch your face a human touches all right your face. all right all oh, right Jesus. really great would good god uh, uh yeah i don't know i mean yes you're not there so you can get the best fuzz neck fuzz cut you're there so you could be a part of uh uh this, this robotics moment in history well i think when they mix that with like the floby remember that yeah mm -hmm. It you know. sucks as it cuts. Yeah. That, for did, those of you who don't did, know. Did you guys uh, know a, 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 bit, a bit of magic legend here that I think is public knowledge? Uh, do you know who is a tremendous? Do you know what magician loved his Floby? Are, are, you smirk, are you smirking because you know and it's not supposed to be public knowledge, Andrew? I mean, I can imagine one or of, of the only people I know that would do that who would admit to it. Probably one of a duo. But. Uh uh, cl uh, cl uh, uh, close, I guess, kind of a duo. They both came from the same state. Um, the uh, uh, the legend I heard is that one Lance Burton, award winning magician. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I heard that too. Yeah. He lo he loved his Floby, and he definitely does have the right cup for it. Yeah, yeah. Lance is a super cool guy. Super cool guy. Um, if anybody could pull off a Floby haircut, it would be Lance Burton. Heck yeah, I mean, dude. Yeah, it, 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 it did. It's 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 it, it was science fiction. Now it's science fact. Yeah, I mean, he might he might be currently pulling yeah. off Floby haircut for all yeah. we. Yeah. It's just that was a an idea ahead of its time. Uh, but you know that's the thing. Think about this in space travel. You know, if you're going to spend six months on a spaceship, you're gonna we're all gonna have to get Floby haircuts. Yeah, I think I might. I think I might go bald or or or. <laughs> Wait, you mean you, shaved? You're, you're you're always the one who's like, I'm here for the future. I'm here for the robots. I'm here for the AI. I can't wait until all of these decisions that I would have otherwise had to have made uh, are taken away from me by way of this beautiful digital future. And yet here, here is where you draw the line. You won't let these robots cut your precious hair. No, I'm just saying that if I was in space, I'd want to look like I belonged in THX one one three eight or something. I'd want to look like Robert Duvall, <laughs> I mean, like like just uh, just uh, ever, go all the way bald. When, when the last time, when's the last time that you were totally bald? That you like buzz cut? Ooh, I, I, the closest I've got in my adult life was uh, when I was doing the spikes. I got pretty tall up on shaving the sides to pretty yeah. much bald. Um, but, but I think it was seventh grade that I did a full on buzz cut, everything just all, all the way. It was not a good look on me. Well, that's my, that's my question. You might in your mind, you're like, yeah, THX, but then you shave that head and you're like, oh my God, what have I done? Like what, what, what was I like? These fins were not ornamental. Like these, these, these were necessary for the flow. Shape Although, of now that I think about it, if I, if, if I was sleeping in zero gravity so that there was never any bedhead, I think the spiky haircut would be like the most functional hairstyle I've ever had in zero G because uh, a little bit of beeswax, everything's all pokey. It's all that. And, and it's like, it never gets disturbed at night and they're just always there. And you can store stuff there. Like, Oh, Brian, hold this memo. Got it. Hold my sandwich right there. That's right. And then I get to find gifts later on. I'm like, that's where that pen went. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's, what's the most functional space haircut? These are important questions we have to think about. Hold on, like, um, hold on let's think about it. Is is there a more maybe a, a dreadlocks you could tie around stuff? God, I hate to say it. Uh, I, I, you know what? I don't hate to say it. I, I'm going to say it loud and proud. An afro has to be a big ass afro has to be the most functionally useful space haircut possible. What, what do you wait? Wait, what? How do we? How are we defining functionally useful? I mean, like 
like number one. I mean, I'm aware of what an afro is. Right. <laughs> You're oh, oh, an afro. Okay. Do, number one. I do know what an afro looks like. I just don't know what just, just just the criteria. All right. Number one, you fall asleep. You're drifting through the space station, bonk into a wall. Who's gonna have a smaller <laughs> headache? Guy with a big afro or not? Second of all, pe- people who are uh, people who are you, you got something you want to store. Does it have hooks in it? Velcro, boom, it goes on the afro. Second of all, you got pens, any kind of object, just boop, 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 boop. There it all is. You got to store it when you need it. You can take a crescent wrench and then low, low G, like you'll know it's there. But then whenever you need it, you just grab it. It's like a superpower. Okay. Well, everything <laughs> except the crescent wrench was something that, and also, Floating, let's table floating through the space station and bonking your head for, for a second. The other two are things that you can just do with an afro and regular gravity. You can't put pens in an afro. And yeah, but you could do gravity. it with like heavier stuff is what okay, I'm saying. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's the crescent wrench. But what you are positing is a world in which you are just on this space station and then periodically you're like, ah, man, big day doing space work. Time for me to hit the hay. See you later, guys. And you just kind of close your eyes and just start floating around the space station. I mean, like, let's say bumping what? head first into many things. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, know. Just all just, just be like past, past, uh, you know, the, the, the last call for everybody to go to sleep. It's just a bunch of yogi bears like floating <laughs> like as if they're trying to find the pie. <laughs> All right, maybe maybe you're in the middle of like a deep realization that that flashing light is actually an alien space signal or whatever. You might distractedly bonk the top of your noggin and in, in, into something out there. I, like, what do you, what do you tell me? You're less safe without an afro? No, I'm just I'm just in love with the idea that the four of us are all hanging out on this spaceship, and much like any time that we're all in the same place, we're just hanging out and talking <laughs> way into the night. Except normally it would end with somebody going all right guys i gotta go to sleep <laughs> walking to their room and falling <laughs> into their bed but instead in this scenario in our beautiful <laughs> bright future we can just say all right guys sorry i'm gonna knock it off <laughs> <laughs> number one you realize <laughs> you realize given my challenging history with sleep you just described like a dream scenario for me <laughs> the ability to at any time say no, anyway no. i'm out that would be Forget amazing Forget space. That's Brian's heaven. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, you bring up some interesting points here. One is I'd hate to be the guy that's told him, sorry, you, you can't go to space. You just can't grow an afro. We're sorry. It's just it's a requirement. We can fix a heart. We can fix lungs. Can't fix that. Show up the which, next day with, with a beautiful perm. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Doesn't count. The other thing is just the thought of uh, a drool guard in space. Or when you sleep. You're talking about like somebody who's watching you and just punches you every time you start I mean, to drool. Just something to keep your like, I, you know, it's like it's for some reason when you sleep in the daytime and the mouth is like, oh, and you drool on the pillow. That's gonna be gross in space. So I think we're gonna have to think about like, do you have like a, a drool mask? Uh, no, no, a little robot. The same robot that during the day trims my neck fuzz. On uh, at night, it has just a little uh washcloth that just like Boop. just just pats it out Boop. as soon as like I'm I'm I'm, I'm drooling a little Dead. bit. Boop. Dead Palmers Boop. pointed out in the chat room who would be the perfect astronaut under the situation. Bob Ross. Yeah, dang right. He's like, uh, <laughs> there's no holes in the sta- space station, just happy accidents. <laughs> we're dying bob we're dying it's like well you, you can't die if you didn't live let's be thankful for that gift how about that <laughs> uh, uh i mean uh, hey bob uh, uh where would people uh, go to support this program oh well back down on earth i know they used to do it at patreon.com slash weird things it's the way to keep the show coming out every single week Every little happy accident, every little fantasy that you might want to have come true. In fact, sometimes they'll go on crazy side jag role-playing fantasies that suddenly get abandoned. But you can make it all possible if you go to patreon.com slash weird things. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to use just a little bit of titanium white to cover up the hole in this space station, saving all our lives. Of course. Patreon.com slash weird things. Thank you so much. Uh... That which there's enthusiasm for, do not get abandoned. That is the motto. Um, <laughs> so, I need one of you to fess up right now. Who did it? Oh, I, look, yeah. 
All right, like Justin Brown. and I were talking yeah, like, about this. We knew it was going to come up sooner or later. Bryce, yeah. do you have something you want to say to everyone? Yeah. Uh, what I would like to say is I know who did it, and I will not be saying who did it. Uh, I mean, uh, that's 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 how no snitching. I am. I'm no snitch strong. Oh, oh, stop snitching. That's right. That's Bryce's motto. <laughs> Forget Takashi six nine. Bryce would have went to jail for the full bid. <laughs> well, when when I hear Atlanta, and then I hear some strange stuff happening, I think of who are the strangest people I know who go to Atlanta. I mean, I would like to point out that one of us has been to Atlanta much more recently than the other. That's true. Mm. I would be the guy. I would be the guy that was in Atlanta more recently because uh, uh, Brian and Bryce uh, did not come out for, 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 for Dragon Con. So I guess it would be me. Well, I mean, if the crime was not going to Atlanta, then I think it would be me and Bryce. <laughs> I mean, like, like if, if it happened while you were in Atlanta, then my guess is you didn't do it to yourself. Look, I, the important thing is, mm-hmm. uh, well, I, I, I know what we're talking about, but just in case somebody else doesn't know, uh, what was it you that know, happened we, in Atlanta? So, you know, we could do a, we could do kind of a little fun game here. We could do a yes, no. Uh huh. And I think it'd be fun to be able to let the audience know ahead of time. But I don't know how we do that. We could just do a yes, no. I'll answer yes or no. Okay. Great. Um, did it happen in Atlanta? Yes. Did Justin do it? Oh, God. I don't know the answer. I thought I could jump to the end on that one. one. I don't know that he didn't do it. But it I mean, w- by the way, for the record, uh, if, if we're just building a, a list of potential suspects here, there's only one person who has written a novel that revolved around a massive biochemical incident happening in downtown Atlanta. Uh, you, uh, you know what? Let's skip to the fundamentals here, Justin. Technically, was it even a crime? Yeah. Okay, but technically, like, <laughs> was it a bad crime? <laughs> I think that's not a technical term, but I I would I'm gonna go deviate from the yes or no and say that it's a really a matter of personal opinion on this. Yeah, that's what I thought. See, there's some equivocation here happening. I think I could solve this crime. <clears throat> Actually, I can't. <laughs> I don't have nearly enough to go on. <laughs> All uh, right, uh, I want to move it. Well, I'm gonna tell one of you what this is. Okay. 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 All right. And uh, I do have uh, another yes/no question. Did it happen downtown? Uh, yes. Uh huh. I'm to uh, All right. downtown Atlanta, the scene. All of right, the look. Crime. You know what? I'm gonna do my bold take because I know what this is. Uh, I'm sorry. Baby driver was not a crime. It was a fine piece of work. Now I grant to you Ooh. that it had some character elements and plot things that I think they could have smoothed over. But it's far from a crime, Andrew Maine. Mm-hmm. And no, I didn't do it. Uh, the the shock on Justin's face when he received. Well, uh, the only question that I have is that I'm I'm now familiar with this, but I don't know if it's in the same city as we've set it up. Yeah, I'm gonna say if it's the thing that you emailed me, you uh, got oh, the major yeah. metropolitan no, I, area I got wrong. The newspaper wrong city. Do we want to say what city it was? Because, by the way, we've all been in this city. I know what you guys are saying. You guys mixed up Atlanta and Atlantis. This was an Atlantean crime that happened. (laughs) See crime. Indecent exposure. Somebody exposed all of his sperm just everywhere, fertilizing so many eggs. All right. So this is in Las Vegas. Brian. Ah, the Atlanta of, of the desert. Of the desert. <laughs> the Atlantic City of the desert. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is a crime that happened. This is definitely a crime that happened in Las Vegas. And and Brian, I gotta say, I know we're friends, but but if if the cops came to me right now and said, "Do you think Brian was in on this?" I, I would have to say. I don't know, and then wink, and then mouth without making any sounds. Yes, he did. I mean, is it fire-related? No. Is it crime-related? It certainly is a crime. I'll say that it's animal-related. 
how big uh, <clears throat> is the animal bigger than a bread box? No. Also, why 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 do we only use a bread box as an indicator of size? Shouldn't that be the indicator of everything? Like, is it market cap greater than a bread box? Uh, is is the, uh, the the resistance in ohms greater than a bread box? Because um, I think both of those are ridiculously low compared to the things that they would measure. Yeah, that's probably why we don't do that. Uh, smaller than a bread box. Is it a hedgehog? Uh, uh, considerably more uh, uh, common, common yeah. than a hedgehog. Is it a hamster? Something that you probably see without thinking of every day of your life. You've probably seen one of these things around you every day of your life if you live around a, a city. Uh, it's, it's always either snakes or spiders. Uh, spiders? Man. Uh, uh, Texas, we are man. Texas. <laughs> We are not there yet. No, 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 not 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 a snake, not a spider. So I mean, you would you would be understood that on a weird things, uh, uh thing that that would not be the that that might be the case. Uh, no, these are are uh, look. Uh, I'm also gonna say this was a crime that initially was uh, uh, cheered and and shared as as something fun. That this was this was anarchy that you only really had to look. Closer to find out the the, the, the sinister on. nature. This is not about squirrel fishing, is it? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> have you have you heard of squirrel fishing? No, I won't. No. <laughs> you take you you go to the park. You take a you take a, <laughs> a casting rod. You tie a peanut to it. You cast it out, and you wait for a squirrel to come over and discover the nut. Squirrel gets his hand on the nut. And then you start reeling it in, and the squirrel doesn't want to let go. And you fish it in until it gets real, real close. <laughs> and then and then finally it gets annoyed and like and just runs away. Squirrel fishing. It's all the fun of squishing. Uh, squishing. Of, 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 of fishing. Rage. Yeah. See, that's squirrel oh, fishing. Um, Watch this squirrel hanging in the air trying to grab his nuts. <laughs> Is squirrel fishing illegal? I, I hope not. Yeah, you wait for them damn Democrats, you give them 20 minutes, they'll oh be fishing for squirrel all rights. Right. All right, all right. Not in an election year. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> oh, I want to see that debate question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God. Oh, uh, man, so, I was about to get really upset. I'm so glad that, that we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So not squirrel fishing. In the same uh, ballpark, think, though. Or, well, yeah, yeah, you're not far off, but this is more sinister. There is more of an actual cost to this than than squirrel fishing. I oh. saw it. Although I will day. also say, probably more irreverency. More irreverent than squirrel fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. And, and 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 it's mammal related, I assume. Is it mammal related? Not necessarily. Ooh, avian related. Mm. Yes. May yes. Yes. Birds. Yes. I see birds every day. Now my my daughter is up on that that train that wants to say that birds are a government conspiracy and a lie, but I I believe in birds. Uh, wait, did somebody hunt and eat a bird of carrion? Did somebody eat a vulture? I mean, wait, how is that more point, a reference sure. than squirrel fishing? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just asking questions here, bro. No, the answer is no. no. <laughs> the answer is no. I mean, we don't know, I guess, is the more technically correct <laughs> answer because I'm sure it's happening somewhere. But but in Vegas, that is not the international news that was created. Is it, is it, is it cruel? Would it be considered cruel? Yes, it would. To, yep. to, to the... Uh, also, also very silly and funny, but but undeniably cruel to the bird um and it's not like something like clipping one wing so it you know spins in a circle when it flies no, no. and you want to know what i think we're gonna cut off that line <laughs> of speculation there because i think we we are not gonna do ourselves any favor if the new game is brian guesses wildly about how to torture birds in the most fun way <laughs> possible so what do you say we just go to the actual story <laughs> all right yeah, so we, show the photo bryce uh, uh, do you want the photo because we have a clip also 
Uh, oh, sure. Go to the clip. I it's oh. the reaction to the photo. <laughs> well, we can. We how about we show the first frame of the video? Oh, uh, oh, uh, feeding something. Wait a minute. Is this that terrible joke of feeding alkyl se- seltzer to to a bird and then they burst or something? No, um, keep keep no. A, keep a, keep another uh, uh, eye. Yeah, wait, look at that bird. Wait, he put a hat on a bird. He put multiple hats. They're, they're wearing little pink ten gallon hats. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You are telling me this is a crime to put a to. <laughs> To, to put a jaunty red hat on a bird? Uh, it, it is when you're gluing the hats to the bird's heads. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that part. When you are permanently, when you are, when you are, uh, you're, you're going to do damage to the bird's heads uh, uh, when those hats are removed. Yes, that is animal cruelty. <sighs> Bryce, was it before your time that we talked about the amazingly trained goldfish thing in China? Uh, maybe it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, that was a similar case of something that looked adorable. Uh, maybe, maybe do a quick search for incredibly trained goldfish because that had a, uh, that had an extra layer of, in order to even accuse someone of a crime, you had to Mm -hmm. sort of break kayfabe (laughs) in the magic world. (laughs) So this was in China? Yeah, in Chinese television, somebody did a miraculous thing and showed their trained goldfish. So what is it that they were purporting to do while I looked this up? Uh, they, 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 they seemed to have practiced to move in unison, and it was uh, quite remarkable because they were one minute they're all just swimming around, just a bunch of fish, and then upon the command of their leader, they would, they would break ranks and show up in formation and move as if marching soldiers off to war war with with squids falling from the sky unrelated so, metaphor it's something like this so it it looks like it's a, it's a, it's actually a, it's a magic effect where where fish are are swimming in a particular way well yeah wait, so, so yeah so this this is yeah this is the routine uh uh there uh you know fish magically leap from a picture to uh, uh the yeah, an actual tank, and then all of a sudden, oh, oh they're my swimming, God! They're God. swimming like synchronized swimmers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, isn't that mm-hmm. impressive? Uh, anything wrong with this that you could detect? Uh, well, the it doesn't seem like they have quite enough water, and also it doesn't seem like they they would be able to be trained in this way. Uh, well, uh, do you I, not believe in miracles, Bryce? Uh, I, I mean, well. I, we, we, we understand that you're here on special dispensation as an inspector general of animal troubles uh, from the United States. Sure. We only have the footage to work with. Uh, 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 do you have a proposal? Uh, well, if if the I mean, I, I, I hate to go so rote with this idea, but is it magnets? <laughs> Ding ding! Oh my God! They made the fish swallow that cowboy hat on that guy. He solved it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. no! Break, break out the crazy glue because Bryce is getting a new chapeau. Indeed, <laughs> it was magnet. <laughs> oh, that's horrible! Don't do it's, th- you're like, oh, that sucked, and it's like, and then you're like, oh wait, oh geez, that's <laughs> you know. Basically, the secret behind every animal show you've ever seen, too, is it's the... cruelty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, the, was I, I, although it's, I, I don't think it's quite as bad as that. I think that what they do is they mix in, like, uh, iron filings or pellets with their food, and then they have enough of it in their bellies that, that the magnets are able to, to uh, Still. keep them on track. Oh, oh man. Uh, so yeah, I I had heard about the pigeon hat story. I didn't realize that the hats were glued on. I guess I just assumed that they were staying on with like a string or something. Uh, that's glue. Don't don't glue. Man, animals, I'll tell you what. Whatever happened to the good old days when a chicken could beat you at tic tac toe? <laughs> but you tell me that's fake next. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so this this was something that went that went uh, 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 viral. But I mean, uh, undeniably, the the pigeons with the tiny little hats look adorable. But uh, yeah, e, e, that's uh, not 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 a good move. Now, what, what what if you did it with uh, spo- What if you used spirit gum, something that you knew is gonna fall off in about a day? Does that make that okay? Yeah, I, you I mean no, but. 
Well, okay. I, I, your 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 mileage would vary uh, on it on exactly how cruel it was. I'm sure animal folks. I would be resistant to it. Obviously, I own birds, so I would immediately put my own bird in that situation. Uh, but uh, I mean, I guess if if it was part of a show, if it was like you know a dove act or something like that, then I don't know. Oh, so uh, so uh, see, this is interesting because which is the morally superior or inferior position let's say that it's spirit gum it lasts about an hour and then the hat falls off naturally which is more cruel to do that to pigeons who live in the wild and take photos of them and enjoy that moment or to do it to imprisoned pigeons who are part of an act and have people laugh at them 2,000 people at a time and it goes on primetime television as part of a Got Talent special. Which, which of those is and then more the Twitter, cool? Then like, the pigeon goes on Twitter and sees he's being made fun of and he's depressed and he, he cancels <laughs> his account, tries to block it. And... <laughs> I mean, which I mean, is... I, I, I would say, you know, any... Uh, all, all the bird performers that I've known have had... You know they they are they are they they care for their animals uh, on on a level that they they want to make sure that they live a happy and healthy life. So if even just selfishly, so they can continue performing, uh, I would assume that if something was so injurious to a bird that it would jeopardize their health or something like that, that they, that they would not do it. So in my mind, the pigeons that are in the wild would be disposable to our straw man who is putting on tiny hats via spirit gum that we're assuming for this, uh, uh, you know, question absolutely dissolves within an hour. I, I would assume that, that those seem like more disposable targets than somebody who's like in, for all intents and purposes, a symbiotic relationship with an animal for their career. I... I knew of a performer, I heard this secondhand, that they had a large cat in their show. And the problem is this was a cat that was not known for like being very ferocious. It just liked to lay there. And the solution was they electrified the bottom of the cage. Now, right? what's funny is I heard this same story, but in a totally different context. Uh, there's a book uh, called P Carter Beats the Devil, in which Carter, the magician, is there, uh, who is a historical figure, uh, figure. He happens to be attending a show, and Houdini was in disguise in the audience watching somebody else perform, and they electrified, to, to get a roar out of a lion, they electrified the panel, and then Harry Houdini jumps on stage, pulls off his disguise, and says, you're a, a real piece of work, guy. But, like, was that based on an actual event? Well, there's more to this story. Let me continue. Is that they would do that to the lion, but the way the magic thing would work is it was an effect where a woman was changed into a lion, right? And the woman would be hidden by means of magic, and then they would need the lion to roar, and they would electrify the lion, but every time they'd electrify the lion, he would pee himself. Oh, I thought they were and you were going to say they electrified the girl, too. <laughs> No, that no, but the girl was in a position underneath the lion. I mean, lion. So I'm saying this was the 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 worst the worst the worst part to be in the magic act was to be the person that had to go into the lion box. It stunk oh. like oh. every time they electrified the lion. Oh, so it I was mean, like double cruelty. Uh, I don't know. It seems like they could also electrify her too, and then that way, like. We definitely no, no, feel no, like it's no, fair no, trade. No, but Brian, but Brian, that would be triple cruelty. No, I mean I can double cruelty. Offline, I'll tell you when this was and who did this. Okay, but but yeah, le le legit, legit. I mean, it was like I heard this. It was a horrific story, but it was one of these things that that act changed the way they did things. But that was like, that was, and I like talk about like that's cruel. I mean, that's like kind of like, and that's sort of the limit. It's like, yeah, some people have a lot of respect for animals, but then you get some people in the animal shows, and holy cow, you know. I don't know who I felt more sorry for, the lion or the girl. <laughs> the lady or the tiger. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, tiny hats for all of them. Yep. All right, let's do picks. I got a pick. 
uh, look, man, you guys know I'm on the cutting edge. I know, I know what the kids are watching, and my kids are watching Parks and Recreation, which I'm watching with them. And we're midway near the end of the second season. Uh, it's so much fun as somebody who so enjoyed The Good Place, uh, hopes to continue enjoying it. Um, the uh, 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 to see the DNA of the comedy chops of uh, Michael Schur as executive producer, to see all of these characters that are such a joy. You know, you watch you, you watch the the Office and a bunch of other shows. There's a lot of, you know, I like this one character, that other character. Very rarely do you get a show where you like every single damn character for different reasons. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, I, I'm really digging it. How uh, how far are you guys watching the show? Just about done with season two. Okay, and that's like really when it starts yeah when it, start, they, it starts to pivot. sing in season two in fact yeah. I, I i might even say if if you are worried about really giving it a try just skip season one because it's only six episodes in season one season uh, was only six yeah it's very very short I I, wow. I I i might be i might be wrong on the exact number but i i was surprised i was like when do we get to season two because i was told that's when it gets good and this is already good and then we we're already three episodes in huh okay yeah parks are great i really I really liked Parks and Rec, and and yeah, it was that you could tell how quickly because you know it's the same people who did you know The Office and whatnot, what they learned from there, and that the changes they made from season one to season two, dialing in what really worked, um, and bringing in you know like this character doesn't work, so we'll write this person off the show, we'll make this character a permanent part of the show, and all of that. Making Leslie's changing her character, Leslie Nope. She went from being dumb to being smart, but very idealistic. I thought that change was better. She was sort of started off as like a female Michael Scott. Well, and, and then the, the, the part that has impressed me the most so far, because it's a hard thing to do, is uh, they make no bones about um, having hot takes on feminism issues, but they were able to not overplay their hand and instead just just give genuine situations where all that needs to be said is the huh you know like 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 just let the situation exist and have it be awkward and feel awkward without being heavy handed uh I, 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 that's it's a hard thing to play something for laughs and also nail that subtlety i i really have enjoyed it yeah and you know the 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 the, the great thing too is you had a wonderful relationship between her and her boss where she's the idealistic sort of Democrat state employee, and he's this rugged individualistic libertarian, and they have a huge amount of respect for each other, and they have different points of view, and they agree that we have different points of view about stuff, and maybe sometimes you're right, sometimes maybe I'm right, whatever. And that's, you know, you'll see the evolution of that show, and it's really this, this, it was from a different age, a different era. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really, really, really dug that. That was, that was fun to, and then when it ended, it was like, because again, I watched it all on Netflix. Like I guess you guys are doing now, and then we're like, "Well, what do we watch now?" Uh, you Community. know what is That's fun answer. is is using <laughs> using that as an anchor to introduce uh, my children to a bunch of other different works. Like uh, you know, like like maybe maybe you know, because we're watching it as a family, and maybe Bonnie has to go tuck a kid into bed. So I'll take that moment to jump over to Flight of the Concords and show the first time I ever saw Aziz Ansari in the in the 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 racist episode with you know uh, Brett and Jermaine. And uh, I, it, it's what what an amazing cast of characters and, and it's it's fun to trace out that web network of where everybody has as came from and where they went to afterwards mm -hmm. cool hey i got a pick it's the graphic novel for the alan moore dave gibbons comic watchman man what a great beginning middle and end what a fantastic <laughs> story what iconic characters the thing I like the most about the graphic novel for the Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons story, The Watchmen, is how there's a clear protagonist. And we move through the story unfolding, but there's no total red herrings or by the end, uh, everything isn't uh, 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 totally misconstrued from the way that we first walked in on it. Man, a masterpiece of dialogue and storytelling, Watchmen. The only time that it was ever told in, in drawn comic form available for you at any time. Bryce? There we go. Okay. Uh, I've got a pick. So I 
uh, have uh, I, I wanted some apps. I'm looking for some new apps on my phone, and I saw a recommendation for this one. Uh, it's a to-do app uh, called Streaks, um, and it's 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 nice because it's all about like daily tasks. Uh, so if mm. if you say, hey, I need I want to walk certain x amount of steps every day it has the apple health integration so you know your phone being a pedometer it automatically will keep track of that stuff uh, if you want to say hey i want to do i need to water my plants every day then you have a thing for that it will do negative tasks so uh you will build a streak on that task so long as you don't do it so like the example that they have there is like smoke you know uh you would undo it on a day that you smoke um I think it's I think it's really well made. Um, it is a paid app. Um, it's it's like four or five dollars. Uh, but what you get in in it is um, uh, is a lot of really cool stuff. You can have timer based apps, so basically like Pomodoro apps. Um, so I've got one that's like, hey, on the day that I do editing, do X amount of twenty five minute segments, and I can just hit the button, and it acts like a makeshift Pomodoro uh, technique. Uh, uh, and it has like a lot of integration. So a bunch of Apple health integration steps, workout time, calories, specific types of workouts. Um, it has, uh, the, the, I have another app for hydration. So it has one, it'll keep track of how many ounces or cups of water I drink in a day. Um, and so I think, it, I think it's really cool. You know, I, I think a lot of that stuff I could do if I wanted with a free app or like the built-in reminders app. Um, but having this be drilled in and kind of having it be a paid thing where uh, it is a little more feature um, full uh, is really nice. So uh, I, uh, I have a lot of good things to say about uh, streaks. Streaks is what it's called. That's cool. I'm looking at it right now and uh, well designed. And I like the idea of things that you've, you know, single focus. You know, yeah. of an app that's specifically for the, that kind of, you know, doing you know, reinforcing those sort of behaviors. And I love the fact that it is a flat buy it price. You know, so many times you see things like, oh, this looks cool. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, click here and we're automatically going to enroll you in a $5 a week, <laughs> you know, whatever. And you're like, holy yeah. crap. Like that's become so predatory. So kudos yeah. to them for a flat. Uh, uh, yeah, knowing that there's a flat and that they're still up updating it. I mean, I think that it's yeah. it, it got uh, uh, some new features within the past couple of months. So to know that they're keeping on top of making this be good um i think also makes it feel good so i'm not paying three dollars a month for yeah. a tasks yeah. app you know yeah so i i went back and i revisited a movie that you know when it first came out the critics did not like it and i remember seeing the theater and going hey i think i kind of dug this and then over the years i've just really begun to love it and that's starship troopers Oh, so yeah. good. So yeah. good. So good. And and it's so weird because the only people who do not like it are people who miss the joke. And it's like and, and and unfortunately, by the time they don't like it, it's too late to explain to them the joke that they're doing. Uh, and, and it was weird to read some of the reviews at the time where somebody felt they were smarter than Paul Verhoeven and said, like, well, I mean, it's almost like. Paul Verhoeven's trying to make a satirical social commentary in which the humans are the bad guys and this is fascism, but but as we all know, this is just a movie about dumb bugs. Yeah, in the you know the screenwriter for Ed Neumeyer, um, I'm gonna pull up his bio because he's a guy that you know wrote most of the stuff that you think of your iconic Paul Verhoeven stuff like RoboCop, yep. etc. And his his very very good biting sort of stuff. I mean, he did. He did RoboCop. Um, he also wrote some of the other uh, versions they've done of Starship Troopers. Uh, they did Starship Troopers 2, like the direct-to-video thing is like not good, but 3 for direct-to-video was actually pretty fun. The, uh, so, I, I also um, give a plug uh, that that writer is, shows up on Harmontown. Uh, I want to say like three or four months ago, and it's just a fascinating two hours because I nobody on the planet loves uh, the work of this guy more than Dan Harmon and Rob Schraub, and just to have the two of them just just have unfettered access to all the geek questions, it was just a blast. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you guys this question. So, Paul Verhoeven. 87, he does RoboCop. 90, he does Total Recall. 92, he does Basic Instinct. 95, it's Showgirls. And I don't know if 
like that was still at a point where Hollywood was very much dominated by two or three media outlets where we're easily 10 years before social media functionally kind of mattering in terms of reputation. But I kind of feel like post that Starship Troopers and Black Book, if you've never seen Black Book, it came out in 06, but it's really smart and and good. It, it's, it's a Holocaust movie, uh, but it, it's it's awesome. I kind of feel like he has... Uh, in in our modern sensibilities, like is it, just kind of a slept on director, uh, which I don't think would would have been thought of when you have you know RoboCop, Total Recall, and Basic Instinct as a streak of films uh, that you that you directed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's always you're kind of wondering what's going on behind the scenes too. But yeah, uh, he he certainly yeah, he had a great sensibility, you know. So, um, like I said, Starship Troopers. Just a fun movie, you know. Like you get the joke; it's really fun. And and you know, I was looking at and like that was for, you know, when they first started using CGI, and it still it looks like CGI, but it was really one of those movies. It's like not would not have been possible to have done that in that way any time before then, where you have thousands of bugs attacking, etc. Um, and you know, kind of sort of was you know a gateway to all of a sudden you know a bunch of you know, overly done CGI movies, but just a, a fun sort of take on things. So uh, that's my pick. And I guess I would just say it's been weird. Hey, that's a show. Hey, uh, there, show. there was no good place episode this past week. Was there? Right. It okay. is not coming out until 2020. Great. Okay. All right. So, so for cord killers, if I've seen, uh, Wordkillers.com. We actually put it in the just uh, uh, if anybody's listening and wants to know, we also put it in the show notes for both shows. What we will be watching the upcoming week. Uh, but yeah, so Mr. Robot, Watchmen, uh, Rick and Morty, yeah, and Mandalorian, yeah. Was okay. there Mandalorian? I didn't uh, know. There, there was a Mandalorian. Uh, yeah, there's Mandal and it's gonna be one on Wednesday. It's gonna be oh, one really? on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Mm, weird. Weird Alorian. <laughs> Despite the fact that the the uh, uh, CGI budget or, or CGI execution on the last Mandalorian, woof. Uh, uh, I, I I did not mind that episode, and I would have greatly liked it a lot more if it didn't have the episode that came before it. Uh, I, I would have I would have enjoyed if it had just gone right from him leaving the the pastoral. Uh, you know, the, the pastoral planes that could be his future that won't uh, be fulfilled going back to a, a a dangerous old life that he'd left behind. Did did we show <laughs> well, Yeah, well we'll we'll talk about it later, but uh but man oh man, uh uh subtlety, not the strong point of this episode. You're like, hey man, we're getting a team together together. It's Bill Burr, the devil, a vampire, and an insect. <laughs> Like, yeah. uh, I wonder if we're all on the up and up or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you think he'd be smarter about his team ups? You know, we're like two in a row. We're like, well, this couldn't possibly go south. <laughs> wah, wah. Um, well, I mean, that's, that's a, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I just, I just real quick. We showed the thing, the behind the scenes tech of what they do at the big, huge video walls, right? Yeah, uh, I, 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 I don't think we. I've not seen it. We've talked about it. Though. We, we talked about. It. I yeah, could not so find it because I think that they are kind of clamping down on some of that stuff. Oh no! I show you. I'll show you right now. You have a link. But, uh, be go ahead. Yeah, Justin. I'm sorry. You're saying. Uh oh oh oh! I mean, I I. The reason why I think it was annoying that the episode that came before was uh, there before this episode because I agree with you, Brian, when, you know, uh, uh, Dracula and, and the Wolfman <laughs> and uh, Hitler and, uh, you know, your, your uh, you know, mom's creepy boyfriend, like, all show up and they're, the, they're your team, then uh, obviously you as a viewer are like, oh, okay, well, this is obviously going to be an awful situation. But the fact that he was hiding the kid the entire time, like, lets you know from your, from the, perspective of the Mandalorian that like, okay, he doesn't trust them. He literally is like, this is a desperate move because he absolutely needs money. 
he probably is assuming that he's going to have to kill all these people because they're going to try and turn on him. So he's like, like he, it heightens our understanding of this reality, which is kind of destroyed by the episode before when he mindlessly just leaves the kid behind and goes on this team up adventure with this guy who's very obviously going to betray him where it's like, Oh, okay. So in the lineage of the story, he's just kind of an idiot who keeps teaming up with random people who keeps putting the kid into jeopardy. Whereas like, I think this episode handled it so much better if there hadn't been this thing previous, man, ah, uh, man, what a bummer. I, I had totally forgotten about the episode between the seven samurai episode and this one. And now I have to upgrade the seven samurai episode in my, in my canon <laughs> because I forgot. But, uh, Oh, oh, come on, Mandalorian. You can do it. Stick the landing. Yeah. yeah a- Andrew and I were talking. Uh, I think the biggest thing that's missing from the show is just the end goal. Like, the, 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 the part of the problem is that we keep getting these battle episodes, but we don't know. It's like, okay, we got to keep ahead. For what? Is there some dude who can remove the biological tracking off the kid? Is there some land that is so remote that that no one's ever followed through like where are we at yeah i i also think that there i mean i think like i'm glad the show exists but there is someone needs to be saying no <laughs> to certain things like so this is what we're looking at right here is uh technology that uh, unreal engines for tech built into these video walls these high density displays. And so what they do is you put your actor in front of there and it provides lighting all around them. So instead of using a green screen, you shoot against them and you slightly defocus the background. And Mandalorian uses this a lot to do it. And it's cool. And if you need to go do a green screen, you can flip a switch and it'll make a green screen appear behind the person. Oh, I, so, I got it. So uh, as the camera moves, it does natural parallax, creating yep. out of focus the the uh, sensation that there is real depth. That's yeah. great. And you can yeah. see it sort of calling uh, ahead of time uh, where the camera, because it tracks the camera itself. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. And so you're seeing it, but so it's it's a really it's an amazing effect, and that's part of what when we heard like the actors talking about how amazing what they're working on the sets and stuff. And so, I think for Mandalorian, they're using like this or a bigger version of it. And now there's it's like in the original series, there's like scenes where you could tell like they're just shot in front of a green screen, and like the person wants to turn and walk some way, but they can't because of the screen. And it's a little there's like there was a lot of that in his last episode. There's been a couple of these kind of like like that station sort of stuff. There was just. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, uh, I've been cringing a lot last couple weeks. Yeah, it's been rough. Uh, here, I'm going to go to the restroom and we'll get, jump right back in. Okay. Hey, everybody. Tell you what, though, boy, do they love casting stand up comedians, huh? Uh, ugh. Boy, ugh. they love casting stand up comedians to do dramatic roles. And I'm, i I tend to be of the mind that it's like, I think that. A, a, a good, very charismatic stand-up, you can do worse than casting them in, like, a cameo role for something, even if it's serious, because uh, very often I think that there's there's an element of dramatic range there, but, like, whew, every episode, huh? We're going to do a funny person in a serious role every episode. Yeah, yeah I I would say that the... Yeah, the cast in this, this series has been... And I'll tell you, the thing, the thing that's ruined it for me was once we found out that Pedro Pascal is almost never in the costume. Oh, really? There are oh. two actors that do it. The Bryce Dass, Bryce Dallas Howard, like, oh, what was it like working with Pedro Pascal? She's like, oh, he was never on set. He just does the voiceover. How oh, weird. Yeah. So, uh... That is weird. Yeah. And I get why Favreau kind of wanted to wait to show some of the tech and stuff behind it. Because now when you see it, you're like, oh, yep, that's what this shot is. That's what they're doing here. Mm -hmm. Still great. Still lucky to have it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I for for what that kind of story is, I like the last episode. There were, you know, some things that I probably could have uh, you know, done a little bit more or less of, but... Uh, so far, the only one that I've been, been like out and out just annoyed with was the, uh, the 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 Tatooine episode. 
I've been like, just like, all right, that's just bad. Yeah, I, yeah. Some of the stuff just like, some of it's just like the pacing and the part of it is the scripts. Like, I feel like they needed another pass with a twist, you know, yeah. a, a thing where it's not so linear. Or, well, I mean, they had like the reversals were twists, but they're like, think those were just broadcast from the beginning. So you were waiting for the, but we're lucky to have it. I'm just going to keep saying that we're lucky to have it. We are lucky <laughs> to have it. That's true. <laughs> Uh, Richard Aote is the, the insectoid robot. I liked it. He was fine. I and mean, it kind of looked like him, strangely enough. You know. How many how many more episodes are they doing of, of The Mandalorian? Two more? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Get it all well, out for yeah, Christmas. Because they're, they're avoiding a, a head-to-head with Rise of Skywalker, right? Is that That's why it's coming out early this week? I think so. That makes sense. Uh... I, uh, uh, Mr. Robot was also very good last night. And I think it's, uh, so because of how we're doing the weeks off for Cord Killers, we won't do a spoiler in time on the Monday after the final big two hour finale. Yeah. Uh, and after this week's episode, um, uh, I'm going to be antsy. I'm going to be antsy about it. I want to talk about, I'm going to want to talk about it, I think. Uh, I mean, you could actually use your Twitter for something other than cum jokes. Oh, that, right. that might be a way that you could uh, you talk about it. Don't don't tone police me. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tone policing you. I'm saying that you have one use. You have a single use Twitter account. It's... <laughs> no, no, no. I, I apologize. Yeah, no, it, no. It's not a single use Twitter account. It's uh, cum jokes and then retweeting the other jokes that you write under the Night Attack account. <laughs> All right, did you need to go take a break, Justin? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. How you doing, Brian? Good. Man, gearing up for a uh, busy, 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 busy week. Yeah, we got a, a busy one ahead of us, it's gonna everybody. Be busy week. <laughs> going to be getting busy uh, yeah. this week. Uh, we're doing a lot of pre-records for Night Attack, so, we get, so you guys keep having shows every week. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, and then... You guys are where there's there's also filmings somewhere in between all of that. Yeah, and there's two uh, two weeks worth of uh, cord killers is happening. Oh, that's tonight. Today yeah, we're, we're doing we're doing the. Did you did you fill out your killies yet? No, I also didn't. I, I still have to watch Rick and Morty and Mr. Robot somehow. In, Ooh. In the yeah, I would uh, say. I mean, it's a good episode of Rick and Morty, but. You you want to see Mr. Robot? Only invest in Mr. Robot. You want to see? Okay, Mr. Robot. all right then. Hey, what's up? Uh, Monday, I will not be available because I hate you all. This coming Monday? Well, yeah. I, uh, do I mean the that's 23rd? we're creeping up on Christmas time. You you just want to take a week off? I just need the day. Yeah, let's let's do that. We'll come yeah, back on the thirtieth. Sure. Okay. Okay. Cool Question beans. marks. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yep. Okay. There we go. Everybody. Write it down. No weird things we, next week. We've um, how long have we been doing this show? Ten, ten <laughs> I mean, years. A long time. My God, I wonder if we went back and looked at our 2010 episode. Uh, the, uh, you know, what were we saying ten years ago? <laughs> we were probably <laughs> arguing about space elevators. And, probably space you know, elevators. Yeah. Rightfully so. <laughs> we go back. Wow, Let's yeah. See. Wow. So weird things dates back. The website has archives going back to April two thousand eight, but, but those are stories. There's, right? a, there's also stories in here. Yeah. Yeah. So if we go talk about the Ansari X Prize in there, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, there's some on 2010. That's May 2008, March 2009. Do we have anything? Uh, we'll, may, maybe uh, check out uh, December 2009, and then uh, we would know where we're at. Jump to 2009. Ten years ago. Uh, Good sure. Lord. There was uh, a Christmas week attack of the sexy clones. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> us. 
stories, some stories, lots of stories. Here. December 1st, so there is two, three weeks between episodes there. Oh, wow, that was a cl I still remember that episode. Dark Territory slash White Meat. Yeah, that was well, one where uh, Brian uh, wanted to live a nude apocalyptic life uh, and then was uh, forced to make difficult questions or answer difficult questions on uh, eating his own family for survival. That doesn't sound like our show. As it turns out, that was that was also the routine. That 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 bit's a decade old. <laughs> Wow, dude, we did the Houdini what? seance 10 years ago in two months. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, when we did that show, uh, Matrix was 10 years before. I mean, I always compare to movies. I don't know why, but I think about, like, what seemed really old, you know? Uh, uh, all right, do we know what we're going to do for After Things? Do, uh, did we do a check in on the launch of of Justin's podcast last yeah. week? Yeah, yeah, last we week. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about shutting down the store for the week? Yeah, that that feels a little bit self promoty, especially since I, there's not much of the story there outside of you know we want to make sure we get everything right, and I mean. Yeah, spoiler alert, uh, that's not the busiest time of the world, and we would rather just do nothing during that time and dedicate ourselves fully to getting stuff right. I think we'll, we, we can do... You know, I'm, 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 I'm fixated on the idea of how much things... Things, I think, change faster, how much things have changed. And I think you could... Talking about retail, talking about online retail, and, like... What's the evolution? What, uh, you know, yeah, what, what's maybe, been... Yeah, uh, you want to talk about, like, what we've learned over the last 10 years because we've all done independent stuff during that time. We can think yeah. of what, what didn't exist 10 years ago and what does now. Because uh, 10 years yeah, ago, there yeah, was no yeah. scam stuff. There was no uh, uh, novels. Uh, wait, you you no had novels. just started novels around that time. No, 2011 is when I started. Yeah, and then Justin as a political... Uh, and, and even Bryce, where... Uh, uh, yeah. Sure, I, I mean, would have been in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do a ten year retrospective. All right, all right. A few guys are good to go. Yep. All right, Andrew, take it away in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things, our special Before Things episode. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. <laughs> Brian Brushwood. I'm ashamed to admit it how long it took me to understand that that gag. <laughs> It'll make sense to you guys at home soon. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bryce Castillo. I think I get it, but I'm trying I'm trying to put I'm trying to con I'm like a switchboard operator. I'm trying to connect if, if, A to B. <laughs> if if I if I could guess, I'm I, the subject of today's episode is where were we 10 years ago because just before we went live with this episode, uh we were talking about the fact that the podcast is just barely over 10 years old. As a matter of fact, 10 years and uh what month and a half ago, we did the live Houdini séance, which by the way, nailed it. Totally contacted Houdini. Uh, just write that check out to weirdthings.gov. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it was it was a uh, uh, a lot has changed over the last ten years of us doing this. A lot of things we learned as independent entrepreneurs that we thought it would be fun to sort of break down and deconstruct. Yeah, so I figure we could dive into each one of us. We want to share with something like what's what's changed considerably and. I, I'll start off and say that like 10 years ago, a good part of my income was made through like magic videos and books and stuff. And I watched as YouTube grew and other distribution platforms grew, I knew that was going to reach its expiration date. I knew that digital content as you know, paying for digital content like that um, was going to reach an end. That wasn't going to be the way it was going to continue in the future. And, and you've seen that now where your bigger magic creators or magic presenters, people like Brian and stuff were people who built up channels in those methods and means. And so I certainly saw the writing on the wall 10 years ago, like, oh, this is, I'm not going to be able to do what I've been doing before. And everything has its run. And I was very lucky to be part of a really good run of that. And that's when I started thinking about what was going to be next. 
And that ended up being books. And, you know, I've talked a lot about this with friends about how I got into writing books for as an indie and then a published author. But I started in 2011 and that role doesn't exist anymore. And, you know, my biggest thing I'd say now is that uh, how much the algorithm matters, not in the whole like Google searchable sort of thing, but as far as how recommendations are made towards other people, how do you get other people to recommend you to other to whatnot? In particular with books, it's really about the Amazon algorithm. And, you know, I don't know. I, I certainly think that YouTube has its version, and Brian could speak about that, how recommendation works there. But word of mouth is really important on some platforms. Algorithms are more important on other ones. And the ones that I'm in when it comes to publishing, I think that the word of mouth is absolutely critical, but it is the algorithm that really is going to make the biggest difference. Yeah, so 10 Crisis, years ago— low crawling. Uh, so, so 10 years ago, there, there, there was no Andrew Main, the novelist. And, uh, and, and now here we are with a uh, multiple award winning, best selling novelist, Andrew Main. Uh, 10 years ago, Justin, there, there was there political guru, pundit, uh, commentator, extraordinaire, historian, Justin Robert Young? Uh, indeed, there was, and he operated uh, uh, exclusively in Andrew Maine's uh, uh, car, where we would just talk about <laughs> politics <laughs> to and from the Arby's. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, for Andrew, this is an unbroken decade of me having uh, constant political opinions, but it certainly took, uh, you know, uh, uh, half that intervening time before I started recording it and putting it out to others. And, 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 the other half of it was me telling story ideas to Justin that it's just like, yeah. just write it for Christ. Just write it. And that was the, the car ride to be politics. I'm like, oh, I have an idea for this. Da, 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 you know? Yeah. I mean, that, that was, I mean, if, if we really want to be honest, especially for me, you know, uh, the, the beginning of the decade was still working with Andrew and us having a million different ideas, trying a billion different things and some of them being more successful than, than others. But uh, the the biggest thing that changed was me obviously leaving Florida, coming out to California, focusing more on the podcast stuff, and uh, that is now the 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 career. And to be to be totally honest, what the the lessons that were learned at the beginning of the decade, which you know uh, at, at times could be hard because uh, there were projects for which we put a t everything everything that we could, you know, uh, in terms of, uh, emotions and, and work ethic and stuff like that, that, you know, wound up falling through for one reason or another, either because of stuff that we did or stuff that was out of our hands. And, and then realizing that, you know, that is, that's the actual life of a creator. The mm -hmm. actual life of a creator is watching 98% of the really rad ideas you have, uh, you know, totally fall apart. And, uh, and then the other parts are understanding what success is. Yeah. Jesus. Now we're, we're going back to 10 years ago. This was the first episode I ever did of, uh, what is now jury daily. Uh, but it was just a live stream out of my room in Margate, Florida, where I had set up this little set and, uh, uh, yeah, that, that wound up begetting uh politics 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 and uh now that is the the primary uh the that is the biggest podcasting thing that i make money on is uh, uh px3 what where, where were you bryce 10 years ago uh 10 years ago that would be 2009 i would have been in my second year at my second what been my second year uh at vcu um, like going to college, not in teaching college. or no, yeah, no, not <laughs> teaching. <laughs> uh, though I did, I did in my, I don't know if it was my junior year or my senior. Year, I did do a few like one-off, like, t uh, lecturey type teaching things. So like, because I do, I did a lot of sound stuff uh, in in college, and so I would teach people how to use Ableton, and because nobody else like, knew how to use it, but a lot of people wanted to use it because it was very music focused um so that would have been before i had even started 
my first podcast. That would have been around the time that I was finding the NSFW show. And so uh, it wouldn't be, I think, until 2011. It, I think it would have been 2011 or 2012 that I started my first podcast, which was a four night a week live streamed on justin.tv and then put out on a podcast feed uh like a it was a mix of things so like a couple days would be like current events or current topics and then one day would be a game and then one day would be a picks day like weird things because i had liked i liked that in in weird things so one day we would just talk about stuff that we liked um and i did that for about nine months uh, uh so, when did you do the kickstarter for your first album uh that would have been that was right before i moved out here that would have been about five years ago uh and that was that's that was actually my second album it was my first one that i majorly published uh or i guess majorly self-published but and yeah it was it was a kickstarter at the time um so yeah that's that's five years ago because that was right that was right out right before i got here um and it's funny, my my brother, this is this is nothing, but my my brother's first kid was born. I remember it. The night that she was born was the night I finally got the artwork back from the artist who made the cover design for the album. And so she is basically as old as that Kickstarter campaign is now. Oh um, wow. Yeah. Um but yeah, the, and, and in terms of like how stuff has changed, like streaming has changed a lot, live streaming has changed. Um, recording technologies have changed. Um, like I remember, I remember having to set up on my big, I had this big like 18 inch laptop to set up the stream. And I would have to, uh, there, there's a program called virtual audio cable, which I think is still around that uh, you would say, okay, plug this thing into this thing. And I would have to run it. I'd have to have like 12 different instances running at the, at, the same time because i needed to run everything different places but you also couldn't like set up an automation so i you'd have to like every time spend an hour setting up all of the different things and making sure they were right by the way i love the fact that what you're describing is the difficulties of making sure a bunch of virtual devices get along mm -hmm. while in the background of your shot is a big fat gigantic physical <laughs> example of yeah. taking that to the next level yeah i mean that's uh, and in fact, thinking about it, I think we can actually expand some of that stuff using very similarly virtual audio cable. So like in some ways, some of that stuff hasn't changed too much, but uh, we've seen we've seen that stuff grow out more. Right. The the need for vir virtual uh, virtual audio stuff. I mean, voice meter, which is something that we we use as a component of our setup here is like a, 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 a big thing in terms of like. Streaming people, streaming stuff is a big thing. Games, podcasts, music, arts, whatever. That's a big thing. There are more services than ever. I mean, every week there's some story about some service making these deals with these content creators to keep them exclusive to their platforms. Um, and I think I think maybe the, the household nameness of them will probably continue to go uh, down and down. We will. It will be more and more people who... Uh, not everyone will know, but I think you'll probably see more deals like that and more content deals. Sorry, you're talking about content deals that are tied to specific platforms? Yeah, like Twitch or, or Mixer, right? I mean, Ninja famously a few months ago got signed to, to Mixer. There was a thing this past week of a bunch of uh, uh, other big name streamers sticking to Twitch, announcing staying on Twitch. Um, and it's almost it's almost like a sports contract negotiation of like, I'm sticking with this team. It's a, it's it's kind of a team based thing in that in that regard. That's interesting because uh, Justin and Andrew and I have talked for years about what it was wild to be one of the last generations to grow up in the monoculture where there were only three channels and everybody knew the same things or whatever. And I think right under our noses over the last ten years, we saw a brief moment of, and maybe maybe YouTube will pull it off and continue to be a monoculture, but kind of. YouTube was a monoculture, and now, uh, you know, through threats of Twitch I, and spins off and all that stuff, I wonder if I, we're going to see more I, splintering. I, I kind of disagree, although uh, you are more plugged into YouTube than I am, but when I watched that YouTube year in review thing, which they totally punted on because the last one was, was so poorly received, uh, it just seemed like 
I knew a fraction of stuff that for other people, I'm assuming that's their whole world, right? Like, like that, that there is, uh, uh, YouTube is you know, so a, big. It can't be considered a monoculture because it, it has it its own. Monoculture. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's like saying like, Oh, well, television is still a monoculture because that's the, 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 the delivery method. But, uh, there's know, also for, 700 for the TV that, channels now. Yeah. Cause it's like, I don't care about K-pop, but yet, it is the dominant thing on Twitter. It is the dominant thing on on YouTube in terms of like all available metrics of what really moves uh, uh, the needle. Now, eventually, will we find kind of like sub monocultures? Will will there be some other way that like now we gather together uh, more as like city states? Who knows? Yes, I mean you, you could say that arguably we're kind of doing that now uh, without directions from one kind of like tower of Babel, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, it is to me, a, a continuing splintering of, uh, things. The only thing that changes the money because like all these defections are staying with Twitch and stuff like that on streaming. That's literally just all about cash. That that's about other companies, uh, you know, be they Google or Facebook or Microsoft saying, we want to get in on this. How would you like a gigantic pile of cash? for uh, mm -hmm. a few years. And I, I think that's uh, that's the big the big change, especially in whether it's streaming or online video, has been uh, uh, focusing on on paying creators up front instead of being these flat, f flat you know, planes uh, for everybody, right? Like, whether it's a YouTube original, whether it's you're getting a mixer stream, like, uh, even, even outside of the, like, AdWords style or, like, Twitch partner you know, um, semi-automated steps to get have a money transaction with these companies. Uh, we're also seeing more very public deals um, to keep creators and content at certain places. Um, you know, in like a la Netflix, or I'm basically saying like the thing that we're seeing with Netflix originals being very public about exclusivity, we're seeing more and more and more of that. Well, you know, what well, well, remains to be seen will be of a, a lot of these platforms which are launching is what happens three or four years from now. Because right now, a lot of the money being paid to get people to go there is the investor money because they're trying to build it out. And we'll see if there becomes which ones will become sustainable economies or ecosystems, which is going to be we're going to have another upheaval, you know, because you're going to get people who are going to pay to go over to that platform B or whatever. But then two years from now, platform B runs out of money and either do they go to the other platform or they go back to YouTube. And I just want to touch on something. Did you just say you're not a fan of K-pop, Justin? Uh, well, I mean, I don't follow K-pop. I would not I mean, consider okay, myself. I'm just yeah. wondering who I saw dressed up aside from Gangnam Style at Dragon Con. I mean, I'm sure, to yeah, it. yeah. I mean, I, I guess I am, I am aware of it as much as anybody else would be. And indeed, I did learn uh, the, the, the dance steps to Gundam Style as well. But, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I have done, I guess that, that would be pretty much my 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 peak of, of being aware of K-pop, this global phenomenon uh, yeah. known as that song, because... I am not. I guess what I what I, I sub that I am. I'm uh, not familiar. Understood. Understood. So it's like yes, yes, I know achy breaky heart, uh, but I would not consider myself a country music fan. <laughs> would you? Did you ever see the remake he did of that? <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Although hell, uh, you know, we can all laugh about uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, except for the fact that he had the number one single in the year of our Lord, 2019. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He was on Old Town Road. Yep, yeah. well, that's a fun song. Uh, it's it's interesting because you see where everybody thinks things are going. You know, where people, you know, we think this is where the thing is going to be and where we want to try to be. And sometimes you're right. Sometimes you know the trend is there. Um, but it can be, you know, exhausting trying to chase after things. I think the things that worked out best for me were just sort of following through. Like I got into writing because of the platform that opened up with the Kindle, you know, with the idea of self-publishing. I got into it because of that. Once that platform was there, I got onto it. It wasn't like I felt like, oh, I have to do this now because now it's early. I just was like waiting for this opportunity. And I think that for a lot of people, like, you know, Brian doing YouTube shows and stuff like that. It wasn't like, you know, I don't think Brian's like, ah, this is where the gold mine is. I think you're saying like, hey, I like to entertain. I like to do this. I'd like to be on camera. Yeah. And, and 
to be honest, in the very beginning, we're going a little bit beyond the 10 year window. But when I first started doing YouTube, um, it, it was, as I've said many times, it was after a failed uh, uh, pitch for Core TV that I realized, oh, wait, I have to have on screen experience. I have to have something I could point to that shows that I know what I'm doing. I have to be bad before I can become good, as we've talked about. And uh, I, I always thought it was a middle step. Never occurred to me that YouTube would be the thing. And, and YouTube wasn't. The thing at first, right? I mean, for scam school, at least for at least months. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, no. For 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 quite a while, there uh, was, was that there, there was that hot minute that Revision Three thought they were competing with YouTube, and right. why would we host our stuff on that platform? And of course, you know, they became an MCN, and and uh, a lot of other stuff changed over the years. Um, the uh, the biggest transformation for me that happened over the last ten years was I was pretty much at the peak of being booked at college shows and trying to wedge in in that dead bandwidth in between shows, just, you know, whatever something extra experience I could do to reach more people. And I thought I was doing it in service of getting more shows booked, but it turned out that as, as, as I've said before, I, I thought I was getting in front of more people for the purposes that I could find one person to give me a thousand dollars for a show. And ultimately over the last 10 years, I came to understand when we launched uh, scam stuff in 2012, that my real job should be to get a thousand people to give me one dollar. And, uh, and so we were able to create, you know, content originals. We were able to reach out and um, uh, if, I don't know. If, if, I can't think of a better word than harvest goodwill, but it sounds so mercenary when you put it that way. But basically to translate that goodwill uh, into ways that, uh, uh, that, that, that create a finance engine that funds all of the creative content that we do here. And so that was, I'm surprised that it took me so long into that 10 year experience. What? Yeah. Three and a half years before I really figured it out to figure out that, that it's important to build an engine to finance everything that allows the content to exist for the content's own, own sake. You know, when Justin and I were working on our first TV pilot, which was actually was for MTV when we shot that, um, with the production company in Orlando, YouTube had just launched, you know, and, you know, that was a sort of because like our phase at that point was you knew the Internet was big, but there wasn't like the one place or thing that you would do, you know, Actually, you want to know what I, I this memory just came flooding back. We were scouting a bar that had, oh, my God, just a, a hilariously you know, talk about everything going wrong uh, uh, shoot that next night. But we were scouting that bar. And I remember looking up at the TV behind the bar and it was a story about how YouTube had been acquired by Google. Wow. We were, we were in the middle of shooting that when that, that acquisition happened. And I remember talking with Andrew about, you know, just all the, the reasons why it, it made perfect sense. And it's funny, 10 years ago when we were having this conversation, more than 10 years ago, that the operative question that we were trying to answer is, well, yeah. So you know, YouTube doesn't make money, but uh, I'm sure with they with the you know all the the bandwidth that they're going to have with Google, they'll probably make money. And even now, there seems to be a question of like, what well, does does YouTube make money? <laughs> like, like do they, I mean, there's a lot of money going through. Like, how much actually at the end? Yeah, it's yeah. it's. I think it is weird that we haven't seen a major. Uh, a, a major video on demand competitor to YouTube in the way that like overnight imager took over photo bucket and why frog and image flip and all these other like ad laden or bad experiences. And, and it's weird to like see imager today where it is kind of bloated in the same way that those services were right with. Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, stuff, uh, ad uh, stuff. Uh, imager of course was built on the back of a lot of traffic and goodwill from Reddit crowds right. because it made it very easy to host and access video or photo and eventually video content. But now ironically, uh, as I scroll through Reddit and I click on a picture that looks like it'll be interesting, if it's not hosted on Reddit, sends me 
not to the picture, but to the imager app that tells me yeah. I should sign up. I have blah, to get blah, blah, blah. I had to get rid of the imager app because it would it would lose it wouldn't even link right. Anyway, I hate it. I hate bad. it. I hate it. I, I won't. I, I whatever that is. I'm like I'm sure it's a fine but photo. Whatever know, that was, and it, then I leave. It it's splintered from Reddit in in that way, right? All the community like imager has its own upvoting system. It has. I mean, people will just go to the imager app, and that's their Reddit basically. Well, and also. Uh, the imager uh, has created their own uh, their own. It's basically a blogging service now, uh, which which brings us to another gigantic trend over the last ten years, which is what I started out. Uh, I started out this the beginning of this decade as a blogger. You know, that's how I spent most of my day. Mo most of my day was uh, figuring out exactly what I was going to be writing about, either with magic or with weird things, and uh, that kind of went away. I mean, the, the, the idea of, you know, blogging has changed so much. And the biggest thing was we saw the absolute peak and then the slow destruction of the blog networks. You know, what, what yeah. back in the aughts were thought to be like, well, you know, like these names, you know, they seem stupid now, but, you know, plus 30 years, they're going to be as revered as the New York Times or I mean, maybe even the New York Post or something like that with, a little bit more of an irreverent tone, but man, a lot of these are gone, and and many of them have been subsumed into other companies. Uh, you've seen the vultures descend on on some of the the uh, name values on them, but boy, that blogging revolution was a quick burn. I think that was. I think we've talked a lot about this off uh, the show, but is uh, how much Facebook and Twitter devastated that. Just just not through any sinister sort of thing, but just as far as if you were going to post something first, you did it on the blogs. But then as Facebook started reaching more like, oh, I guess I should post it on Facebook, too. And then you're kind of like a lot of people are like, why am I posting on my blog? Nobody goes there. And then we paid that price. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, was, yeah, when, when when all the content clicks went to Facebook and everyone and Facebook was like, "Come on in, we can connect you with your audience. You'll have all these great insights. This is the future. Like, like look at this amazing social graph. Uh, uh, you know, you know, we just helped elect Obama because he's super smart. Come on in." And then everybody did, and then click, and you realize they that put the, the chain on the door. Outside. And you're like, "What did we do?" <laughs> can Can I talk uh, about what I think? is a, a thing that we'll see more of in 10 years from now. Ooh, yeah, speculation. So Tell me where to invest, Bryce. Tell me where to invest. So have we talked about Coil before? No. So Coil is a payment platform. So the way that they have it set up now, but they are built on a bunch of standards that, um, uh, that, that uh, are more open and people could basically make their own, is... You pay five dollars a month for a coil subscription, whatever. Ah, um, one of these. And and create and so it's a plugin. It's a plugin for your web browser. So the time that people spend on your website or on your video, say, uh, that turns into m money for that creator. So. Uh, you might say, okay, here's my blog. You are reading my blog. The time that you spend on your on my blog, you can even look at the thing and it ticks up like fractions of a cent or cents. Um, and then you, by having that subscription, you can open up like, oh, here are the exclusive videos. Here are the version. Here's the version of this video without ads. Um, I I I was a little hesitant on a, on it, but a few months ago, may, maybe close to six months now. Um, Imager and Coil have a partnership because Imager kind of needs to work on their monetization strategy. And it's very tough to monetize images because you can just screenshot anything. Um, and so having a system like this, which is basic, which would is, is very similar to like a, a it's a user pay system, kind of like a Patreon. Um, if it's based on how much time you spend on an app, um, I think I think that there's something here. I think but that there's something here. It, it it sounds like a proto version of what I've wanted desperately, which is uh, basically cable for news sites, where it's like, don't make me sign up for each of your individual newspapers and magazines and all that stuff. Just mm -hmm. let me just let me get charged micro payments to for however much I eat of whatever it is you have, right. and 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 no pop ups, no none of that stuff. 
And, um, and so my understanding, so the web monetization as part of this is is the name of this the spec that they use. And I think it's open enough that people, if you wanted to, you could go and build your own version of this. But this is already hooked into, there's a blockchain element so that payment processes and small payments make sense without a million processing fees. But I, I, I think it's really interesting especially as we keep getting further and further into a space where people don't want to see ads. They would, they would rather support a thing or they, we, we can keep pumping more ads into stuff to replace the fact that ads are either less effective or something like this might show up. So I would not be surprised if, like in your example, Brian, there was some sort of like, hey, we own all of these newspapers. Here's our, comp our publishing company's coil for that. Well, here's the problem, is that nobody wants to undercut how they're making money now. And right now, the newspaper industry, which, I mean, for, for people who are uh, purveyors of the first draft of history, boy, are they bad at understanding their own history and how terrible they are with uh, technological evolutions, because they can only see six inches in front of their face. And that's exactly, that's been the case for the past three decades. I'd be shocked if they did this. Brian's dream of the the like hey just pay this one thing and maybe we can all share from it uh is right now remote uh until newspaper uh, clicks die down which is being driven by one very controversial vertical right now eventually that will calm down and you will see the natural trend lines of these uh, uh things kind of i think revert back to the mean a little bit and at that point, maybe this is a a situation where you're like, okay, if I'm spending time on this, then I'm I'm paying money into it. But uh, the the problem that newspapers are facing is similar to what we were talking about earlier with Facebook. They're always fighting the last war, and the last war for them was we gave up everything to Facebook. We took their stupid money so we could build little mini sites on there. We fed them all of our users. We gave them all of our content. We counted on them for clicks, and all they did was alter the deal and tell us, pray we don't alter it any further. Yeah. And so now— <laughs> Not, not like, only did they alter the deal, they sent us a bill for it. <laughs> We're like, great. Oh, yeah. oh, you th yeah. yeah, you got to write a little bit of it. Yeah. And so now they are—and I'm specifically talking about the vanguard of this movement, which is the New York Times and the Washington Post. They won't give up their direct relationship with users— for anybody mm -hmm. they will not they are because that that's that's the lesson that they learned is never trust anybody especially anybody from silicon valley never trust them they, they they're only gonna uh, you know get us into this thing and they're gonna make us dependent on them and then they're gonna uh, uh, make it more costly which is why you know even somebody like apple which had under steve jobs the reputation of being able to bring together the big deal because they have a certain brand. They're going to make sure that the money's right. Uh, you know, the New York Times and Washington Post didn't want to do it. And and now Apple News, their subscription service, the Apple uh, subscription service is kind of DOA because of it. Yeah. The I think I'm excited whenever somebody wants to try something like, like Coil. And there's a few other sites that are trying to come up with monetization schemes and I, I want us to keep coming up with ideas, people to keep doing that. But, you know, every time I see one of these, though, you look at it and like, OK, how will people game this system? Because the biggest the hardest problem of doing any kind of commerce on the Internet is fraud. And that's why PayPal got an early start and spent a tremendous amount of startup capital preventing fraud in order to get where they are. Google, what they have to do to avoid click fraud, remember, click fraud was such a huge thing and it was just an arms race. And so. You know, you see a site like this where it's like, you know, people figured out how to game Spotify with like fake album names and stuff like that. And that's the thing that, you know, whenever I, I talk to people who are working on stuff like this, it's like, what are you going to do for fraud? Because that's what kills these systems where, you know, you have sincere content creators and somebody else figures out like, oh, time on the site. Great. I can do this. I can develop a little you know, JavaScript pop up that sits up behind the browser and it's going to stay there for longer. And you get all these sort of things, which they're not reasons to not do it, but you want to know that sure. they're paying the right attention and not just hand waving away, you know, the, the fraud aspect. Yeah, I, mean, I would, there, I would, mm -hmm. what's it? I mean, yeah, there, there are definitely problems to a time spent as a metric uh, for, for value because that 
that values long or lower quality uh, content that you can pump out much, much more of um, versus if you have a, a good 10 minute read, uh, you know, mm -hmm. once a month, you know, like absolutely like this is, but, but I think something like this, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see like with the wall street journal or the Washington post, uh, or sorry, like the Washington post and uh, the New York times, like you mentioned, Justin, like that's because those mm -hmm. are kind of monolithic, uh, uh, you know, structures, where I think if you had someone who was like a local newspaper and, you know, all of the local newspapers are owned by one company, they can maybe they have something like this where they, yeah. there's a semi network oh, oh, element. I, 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 think, I, I think that there's there's a room or something like this. Now, Andrew's point is, mm -hmm. I think, the, the, the operative phrase here, because anything that is created on the Internet that is working as seamless as possible is at tremendous risk for for a a constantly increasing like uh, a, a machine learning threatened fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as far as newspapers go, uh, look, uh, the one thing I would say is any, if, if the phrase in the next 10 years, uh, newspapers will dot, dot, dot. And what follows that is make a smart financial, a forward thinking mm -hmm. financial decision, uh, then reconsider what you're about to say, because that will definitely never happen. Yeah. I, I I think there's room for this. I I'm I'm always looking to see when I to these places like who's who's on your fraud team. You know, do you have a fraud team yet? If you have a fraud team, I'll take you more seriously because you understand really what the game of e-commerce is about. And I want to see more of this. But you know, nothing could work. It'd be like if Google or Amazon did a you know was able to do micro payments. If they set up a micro payments thing that said, listen. You can't take these things out. You know, you have to wait two months to take these things out because of fraud or whatever. But if it was a brand like Amazon or even Apple or Google, and they did micropayments to be able to play two or three cents at a time, would be wonderful. It could change the shape of the internet. Well, and keep in mind, we're seeing proto versions of that with like the way payments are done on YouTube Premium, where uh, no, these people are not watching ads, but there's sort of a they are watching this much of your show in an alternate reality where they were watching ads, you would be making about this much money. Let us write you a check for that. So really, basically, if 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 there sort of were two internets, one with ads, one with everybody having their premium service, now imagine somebody works out agreements for the universal payment service that 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 aggregates all of, of their shares of the ads or the premiums, whichever way, whichever lifestyle consumers wants to live as, as they randomly encounter your stuff. I mean, on, I'm, on the one hand, I want this to happen. On the other hand, it sounds like an awful lot like the Pollyanna ideas that we heard back in the 90s, and, and that makes me well, not very op optimistic. Because of all of those people, everyone... Make, oh, no, go ahead, Andrew. I make a good portion of my income from that model, actually. A good portion of my income comes from Kindle Unlimited. And the way Kindle Unlimited works is you pay X amount of dollars a month, and then I get paid per page read. And because... Amazon has such a tight lockdown on their ecosystem of the Kindles, and they're able to, they've had instances of fraud, but they've worked against, you know, like, you know, you basically, for every page read in the Kindle Unlimited system, I get paid a, a tiny little fraction of X amount of money that goes into every month. They say there's like, there's $20 million in the Kindle Unlimited fund, and however many pages you get is going to get a percentage of that. It's hard for Amazon to be able to monitor that and prevent fraud and stuff, but as far as I know, they do a pretty good job, and I make good money from that, so... I've seen in that system, like that's what I do for publishing is, it, but it's all through Kindle. It goes through that world. And if somebody wanted to make an external version of that, fraud, fraud, fraud. But yeah, I mean, Brian, I think, you know, we, we've seen it work in small systems there. If we can figure out how to make it work outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I, I'm about to run out of time. Do we want to jump into picks? Oh, just let me clarify. Just the credit, the two point five seven, two and a half percent, whatever credit card fee for micropayments. That's exactly the problem. That's why we don't do three cents transactions. PayPal had built in a microtransaction structure within there in the early versions of it, which would bypass all that. But that went away, sort of. And but yes, that's the problem. Same to with Patreon. Sorry. We were able to get a bunch of patrons to pledge just a penny an episode in the early days, and then they yanked on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, my, uh, my, my pick is, um, uh, uh, we, we just finished for the second time, The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt, uh, uh, highly recommended. Everybody should read it. You're a good person if you've read it. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. Man, I, I know I, I know I watched something. Oh, I liked Rick and Morty. I didn't see the episode last night, but the Rick and Morty episode where they where Morty gets a dragon. Mm. There's just some funny stuff, man. These these episodes, I just like laughing at them. <laughs> uh, this week this week's Rick and Morty was good. Uh, 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 I won't say too much about it, but uh, it was a uh, it it it, it kind of feels like they're kind of doing genres this season. So I think they have a they take a they take another genre. I, they, they've always done like takeoffs of certain ideas or movies or television shows or whatever. And uh, uh, yeah, so this yeah the one that I saw that I really liked was the uh, magic versus science, basically. So Rick has to live in the world of 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 magic uh to complete his quest and uh i don't know there's just it's a it's a very funny well-written show yeah, yeah. um I've, uh, oh. good. Sorry. Right. i uh sorry uh, i've got a pick uh so i mentioned my to-do app uh in in weird things uh and i mentioned during that that i have a hydration app uh it's called waterminder i think it's uh neat and it's also another paid app um, but what you get for it is a ton of customization. You can set quick, uh, you know, quick things for like, oh, I drink uh, uh, eight ounces. My, my glasses at home are eight ounces, so I can make a quick thing to do that. Uh, it has Apple Watch stuff, Apple Health stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. And uh, if you, like me, are not very good about hydrating, uh, Waterminder is good because I think for for me I'm trying to cut back I'm trying to cut back a little bit on soda and so if I have a thing that reminds me to to take to to stay hydrated then I will replace a lot of that with water so Waterminder yeah um I was about to recommend this book but I don't know it's I can't find it on Kindle and man I don't know if it still exists outside of like having to pay a lot for a copy and that was the PayPal Wars which was all about you know kind of like uh, you know the formation of PayPal. But um, if you can't do that, the Elon Musk biography, spend some time going over that. But just the early days of that e-commerce stuff is just fascinating. Of just how much, you know, you know, PayPal realized, oh, man, to do this, we'll have to become a bank. I'm like, all right, we'll become a bank. And how do you do that? And, you know, granted, the 90s were crazy times where a lot of things were possible. But uh, it's just very interesting because it just the commerce side of things is what made the internet really work, and it's the thing we struggle with today. But it's a thing that we tend to sort of not want to pay attention to. Mm. So. Well, everybody, it's been before, mm. now it's <laughs> after. Hills, yeah. All cool. right, hey, good work, everybody. We will be back with more weird things in, but not next week. So heads up on that. Uh, but we'll have cord killers coming up. In a few hours, uh, with with the Killies also, so kind of a long. Yeah, it's so gonna we'll, be a long one. We'll probably go short on cord killers a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I got I got so. a lot of to dos to do. Yeah. Uh, Justin, any more streams today? Tomorrow? No, I mean tomorrow I'm uh, I'm off uh, to see you guys, and we're gonna try and bank out all the episodes for Night Attack over the next few days. So uh, right. we'll be, be cooking on that, and then. Uh, yeah, I'm bouncing all over the place. Yeah, hell yeah. And roll. Andrew, doing any? Well, if Justin's not, maybe I'll I'll use the airwaves since finally he's <laughs> freeing them up. <laughs> Alrighty, well, uh, uh, we'll see you guys soon. Here for more stuff today, tomorrow, and forever. Bye. Oh, bye, 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 bye. Oh, 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 oh.